What's up, guys? Welcome back to Tech... Ah, who cares? Who cares? Mm -hmm. So we've all got that one willfully ignorant older family member who just doesn't give a shit about learning how technology works. Mm -hmm. And then that person's always flabbergasted when their Facebook account gets hacked and starts posting ads for penis enlargement pills and hot milfs in your area. Cheap Ray-Bans. Go buy them now. <laughs> it's usually pretty harmless stuff. I mean, even when their computer illiteracy leads to their credit cards being compromised, it's usually as simple as calling up the bank and signing a piece of paper for things to go back to normal. But Let's say that that computer illiterate relative of yours is now the U.S. Secretary of State in mm. charge of handling all of the United States' relationships with the rest of the world's nations. Good. You'd probably want them to be a bit less careless. But careless is the best way to describe how Hillary Clinton decided that instead of using the official State Department secure email server, she'd just do all of her online communication via an unsecure BlackBerry phone using private email server hosted inside her house. What's wrong with that? Sure. Actually, no. A better word would be illegal, because while the FBI's investigation of the Clinton email scandal is ongoing, a State Department audit released last week concluded that, yes, Hillary's use of a private email server violated the law. See, when you're Secretary of State like Clinton was from 2009 to 2013, you have access to a lot of sensitive, sometimes classified information. Information that you would not want the general public, or foreign governments, or enemies of the United States to have access to. Which is why way back in 1950, the Federal Records Act was passed, requiring government employees to document and submit all of their official correspondence, and also ensure that these records are kept safe. And the State Department's internal rules further state that you need to be doing all of your work-related correspondence through their email servers, because they have appropriate cybersecurity measures in place. And then at least if it gets compromised, it's not your fault. Yeah. Exactly. It's a fail-safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put in place to help situations like this. Sure. Anyways, the 78-page report published last week looked at not only Hillary Clinton's use of email during her tenure as Secretary of State, but also the last couple Secretaries of State before her that have also used email as a primary means of communication. And the report does state that former Secretary Colin Powell used a private email account as well, which the Clinton team is using as an example of Hillary's email practices being consistent with previous Secretaries. But Powell was Secretary from 2001 to 2005, and the report says, by Secretary Clinton's tenure, the department's guidance was considerably more detailed and more sophisticated. Secretary Clinton's cybersecurity practices accordingly must be evaluated in light of these more comprehensive directives. So you would, wouldn't be too surprised to think that these rules from the 1950s would change as technology evolves. Well, yeah, and like, you know, they know a lot more about how cybersecurity works now than they did 15 years ago in Colin Powell became secretary. Well, I mean, the best email that came out of his unsecured emails that were sent was Bush did 9-11, which was sent via right. uh, MSN Messenger back when that was a big thing. No, they they, they, <laughs> they figured out his 4, 4chan post. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There he was a real shit poster. Really, yeah. yeah. Prolific, <laughs> some would say. So, while the report does acknowledge that previous secretaries of state were, quote, slow to recognize and to manage effectively the legal requirements and cybersecurity risks associated with electronic data communications, with Colin Powell, it was ignorance, but mm -hmm. with Hillary, it was willful ignorance. Because according to the report, Hillary and her team were told by the State Department multiple times, in no uncertain terms, that what they were doing broke the rules and was unsafe. And they just ignored it. In one case, telling State Department IT that, quote, the matter was not to be discussed further. Mm -hmm. Go back to your nerd hole, egghead. This is what Obama was talking about when he said he wanted to pull the curtain back on the government in DC, put it all out there for the people. Hillary, just use the Gmail. Yeah. It's fine. I mean, Gmail would probably be safer than this. No. Uh, will Hillary face any consequences for this? Uh, the court of public opinion, at least among the majority of voting Democrats, has issued a resounding not guilty verdict, uh, as evidenced by the fact that she has a virtually insurmountable lead in the Democratic primary over Bernie Sanders, despite this whole email scandal. But even in an actual courtroom, if Hillary does actually get indicted by the FBI, the Federal Records Act only allows for administrative punishments, which are completely meaningless if you no longer work for the State Department. An indictment would be symbolic at best. You're fired. Well, that's, Wait. I already quit. Yeah. Four years ago. Mm-hmm. See ya. Hey, by the way, Applebee's, sometimes I had chips and salsa without paying for it back in 2001. You're fired. Shit. Damn it. So a big conservative talking point in the Clinton email scandal is the comparison to former CIA director David Petraeus's mishandling of classified information that resulted in him being charged with a felony and put on two years probation with a $100,000 fine. 
But the big difference is that Petraeus willfully gave a notebook full of classified information to the woman who was writing his official biography. Who he also happened to be cheating on his wife with. Elliot, come on! Let's leave the wives out of this. Anyway, Clinton... It, it's bad, but she didn't intentionally share state secrets with anyone. She just made it really easy for hackers to get into her email. So it's mm -hmm. not really the same thing. Bush did 9-11. Send it off. <laughs> so the hackers did. Or at least one that we know of. A Romanian hacker known as Guccifer. Guccifer? Guccifer. It's like Lucifer Gucci. and Gucci. Gucci. It, it sounds dumb. I, th I like Guccifer better, but like an evil goose. But whatever. Anyways, <laughs> the guy's name is it doesn't make any sense to the story. Uh, he previously managed to hack online accounts belonging to Colin Powell, George W. Bush, uh, but not while either was in office. Uh, he also hacked several other notable people in politics and entertainment, uh, managed to get into the email account of Sidney Blumenthal, a close friend of Hillary Clinton and an employee of the Clinton Foundation whose ClintonEmail.com email address was on the same private servers as Hillary's. Uh, and Gucci Fur used his access to search for any emails to or from Hillary and then went ahead and leaked a bunch of the messages online. So because he didn't actually get into Hillary's personal email account and because Blumenthal's correspondence with Hillary wasn't directly related to State Department business, there wasn't a whole lot of juicy info in those leaked emails. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still extremely troubling that he was able to access the server at all though, especially when you consider that his hacking methods weren't really hacking at all. They were just social engineering and guesswork which only really require patience and persistence if security measures are weak enough. And back then they were. I mean, a lot of the reason that people have their accounts hacked in the past 10 years has been social engineering, not yeah. actual like brute force hacking or anything. Yeah. That It's like, oh, I know this person's birth date and what their uh, street they grew up on. Yeah. It's If you're a now, public figure, it's yeah. way more complicated. Now, now it's a bit different. There's a lot of two-step verification stuff and we're getting into fingerprinting uh, technology, which don't do because the cops can make you put your finger on your phone. Anyway. Am I free to go? <laughs> am, I, am I being detained? <laughs> yeah, actually, yes, Mrs. Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. uh, so uh, Guccifer, real name Marcel Lazar Lahel, was arrested in his home country of Romania back, please, in, please. <laughs> back in 2014, and he was extradited to the U.S. this past March, and last week he pled guilty to uh, hacking and identity theft charges in U.S. federal court. Sentencing is scheduled for September 1st, and he faces between two and seven years in federal prison. Hmm. I feel like it should be higher. Please! Yeah. Anyways, we do have some actual non-political, non-government tech news squirts for you this week. So let's get through them. The Computex Annual Computer Expo in Taipei is going on right now, and Asus, who's based out of Taipei, has shown off a bunch of new products at their hometown tech convention. Their new ZenBook 3 laptop is thinner, lighter, more powerful, and cheaper than the MacBook Air. Uh, it's shiny and chrome, as you would say in Mad Max, mm -hmm. and it'll be, it'll be available sometime this summer. Not just a good laptop, if you angle it right, you can like shine light in people's faces. It's actually solar them. powered, I'm making that up. Yeah, you made that up. Mm -hmm. uh, they also unveiled the Transformer 3 Pro, their answer to the Microsoft Surface Is Pro. Is it tied into the new Transformers movie? They do a lot of uh, product placement. It wouldn't surprise me in the least. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, it's essentially the exact same design as the Surface Pro, yeah. just sort of more luxurious looking, like the dimensions are the same, the specs are the same. It's shiny and chrome, though. Good luck getting those NFL commentators to call it the uh, Transformer that 3 on iPad, camera. That iPad Yeah, thingy. he's holding an iPad. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> this is fault <sponsored> by Microsoft! <laughs> Dumbass! <laughs> and there's the Zenfone 3 uh, line of phones, which they look good, about as good as any decent Android phone, but they're also the first all-metal unibody phones to not feature antenna lines, which were never that annoying to begin with. They're very discreet, but not having them here definitely makes these phones ever so slightly more sexy. They released a phone that has like a seven and a half inch screen. That's a tablet, Asus. It's bigger than the original Nexus tablet. Well, you won't be seeing Donald Trump holding one of those because he's got those little doll hands. Yeah. See, we got both sides of the, of the <laughs> presidential race. Even handed. Ah, no, not so. He's got tiny <laughs> ones. Yeah. I want to see him and Hillary put their hands up. That needs to be the first debate. Him and Hillary Clinton go up She's and She's just their, like, uh, Donald, I'm waiting. Uh, yeah. Got a big hand right here. I'm for a you. woman. Yeah. And they're bigger than She's yours. got huge hands! <laughs> She's got man hands! Well, for her! They're even bigger than my huge hands! Yeah. Use those big hands and type all those emails, unsecure emails. Anyways, back to Asus. Uh, they showed off a VR headset along the same lines as the Samsung Gear VR, but with a little more luxury and, of course, requiring an Asus Zenfone. Uh, it's got a touchpad and buttons on the side like the Gear VR, but the polished aluminum and leather straps are definitely a step up looks-wise. And finally, Asus has unveiled the Zenbo Robot Home Assistant, 
Which is cute until you realize that this is proof that Wally and his companion Eve had sex at some point and this is now their child. As far as we can tell, it's basically an Amazon Echo or whatever the new Google thing is, but with a touchscreen face. And uh, it also has wheels that let it roam around your house. Yay! The cats will love it. <laughs> yeah, it's only gonna be about $600 when it comes only. out. Only. Uh, yeah, I guess it's pretty cool. So far, Asus has done an absolute shit job at explaining why anyone would actually need this thing. Did you hear they uh, they broke down the Google Home device and it's just a Chromecast with a speaker? What? Yep. It's like they took one of those uh, uh, air freshener things that goes off once every 10 minutes, yeah. put a Chromecast and a speaker in it, push it out. I don't know what's taking them so long. Just release it now. So I can make one myself for way cheap? You can make a lot of things yourself for cheaper. Yeah. But we're lazy. Yeah. We have we get beers delivered to our houses from an app. Done that twice this week. Yes. <laughs> but what would Tech Tuesday be like without our colleague, Phil Larigo, stepping in to tell us what tech story is really grinding his gears this week? I hope you're angry this time. Uh, in the case of last week, they greased his gears. Get angry, please. Yeah. Hopefully it's back to grinding this week. Uh, happy Phil sucks. Yeah, it's not fun. What a what a uh, inquisitive shirt. Yeah, with he, a, a whole it has a whole story behind it that I'm not willing yeah. to solve. Is he looking into the mask, or is the mask looking into him? I think no. it's society looking at the wolf. I'm sorry, I'm not high enough for this right now. I want I want the robot from Rocky IV at the beginning, like Polly, and it's bringing him beers. When we have that robot, that's when you can sign me up. Beer butt. Um, yeah. But I can't jump in uh, without mentioning my um, new sponsor here on Tech Tuesday. Advertising! Woo, woo. Just when you thought you couldn't get any more ads, our buddies over at Samsung have found a new way to serve up additional, hey, buy this, right on your TV set. Good. The South Korean tech, it's not for your show, it shouldn't be good. Oh, the South Korean tech giant's adding interactive advertisements to the menu bars on its high-end smart on TVs in Europe, an initiative that's been popping up on American TVs like Herpes since last June but they don't have Veltrex for that. So let's say you have an older Samsung TV and you got nothing to worry about, right? Gah! Here's where the story gets super cool for you because a firmware update will allow these ads to show up on your TV even if this feature wasn't there when you bought your expensive rectangle. So if you weren't one of the lucky Samsung people who had Pepsi ads freeze your content and put a goddamn cola banner right in the middle of your screen in 2015, Guess what? You too can experience this at no additional cost. Finally! Think about how sweet it's gonna be when you're watching one of your favorite shows and then there's Apple product placement and everyone's like using Apple products. And then if you're using Time Warner like we have in LA and you hit the guide button and, and on the bottom of the guide, there's a there's a, a banner ad at the bottom. And then while you're scrolling through the app- That actual, already happens with Time Warner. I know. So yeah. you're gonna have an ad up here and then you're gonna have your ad down here. And while you're scrolling through, the show's gonna end and a commercial's gonna come on. So that's another one. And then Samsung like we got this guys and they freeze the whole fucking thing so then you can look at their thing that's almost four concurrent ad streams being shoved into your stupid brain mm. i don't know about you but that's why i pay over a hundred dollars a month for cable Idiot. to see more ads than if i took a wrong turn while surfing porn Are you 40? And, and ended up in one of those endless pop-up loops yeah. where in like redirects and you're like wait i can't where'd she go that this isn't the girl at all so mm. local singles want to fuck you now in your area on this TV, your bathing suit area. Yeah, oh, this is pretty cool. Yeah. I like this show now. Mm -hmm. Look, it's getting really, really rough to get content without ads. Right now, there's very few players in the game that'll serve you up shows and movies without shoving commercials down your throat. I mean, streaming services and premium channels with monthly subscription fees sometimes give you that stuff to watch so without ads. Do? But some things like HBO and Netflix and Sony View occasionally, uh, you know, those can be as cheap as 10 bucks a month. So why is it that if you spend more money on cable, you get hammered with even more ads? It's money. It's money. That's the only reason. Because you let them. Okay. Oh, what am I? I'm like a Stop promise bending keeper. Over, Phil. I'm one of those promise keepers at the border with a gun. Look, there's nothing wrong with building an ad-supported business model. I mean, TV does it for how long and all those apps on your phone do it. But the fact that content providers can double dip and rake your eyeballs over the advertising coals, it's not fair. I know it sounds like a five-year-old, but it's just, it's not fair to do that, that everybody gets attacked their stuff on. I'm not an idealist that thinks things should be free, or that the shows and movies we love don't cost crazy amounts of money to produce. But the me first greed of everybody that touches a content stream between you and the creators unfortunately happens because they can. And practices like this cause backlash and create controversial and overcorrecting counterbalances like ad blockers and piracy. 
If you're one of the unlucky Samsung TV owners who's now receiving ads, go into the description below and click the link for instructions on how to navigate the menu on your TV and disable those ads. And no, the answer isn't to install ad blockers on everything and steal all the stuff you want because Samsung wants a new ad revenue stream. We're back to the old standby of voting with your wallet. Maybe hit Samsung up on Twitter and be like, hey, why are you doing this? And for the love of God, don't just sit there and take it. But if you are susceptible to ads, be sure to buy the commemorative ETC podcast Blu-ray with all your favorite hits. We got Where in the World is Ricky, uh, Where Did Alex Beard Go, and my personal favorite, Where Does Phil's Never-Ending Stream of Anger Come From? Yay! It's my black yeah. heart. By the way, uh, you're watching this show for free, so fuck off. Yeah. You don't pay anything for this. Yeah, stop complaining. What's an ad or two? Also, here's why I think that that might be good eventually. Say uh, an ad comes up for Jack Daniels, and it's like, Hey, we've integrated with that app that we use. Click now to have Jack Daniels at your door in 10 minutes. Then I'm okay with That's that. That's way too okay. optimistic. Yeah, no, it's, uh, think about this. If they're doing it on the TVs, just imagine what you're gonna be getting on the Samsung VR when it's your actual vision that's gonna have ads on it. Mm -hmm. You'll be walking down the street just like, oh, doodly do, Sunglass Hut over here on my right side is gonna have a sale. Uh, I can go in there and use a coupon. Like, it's just, a, it's gonna be a mess. The whole thing's just. There's a video coming up that addresses that very fear. Oh, good. Because we're about to move on to some cool tech-related videos we saw online this week. Uh, so the Indy 500 was this past weekend. Leading up to it, the official IndyCar YouTube channel uploaded a video explaining how IndyCar aerodynamics have changed over the last century, because it's been going on since 1911. Mm -hmm. Back when it was real dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone died. They used uh, computer-generated simulations to show the crazy amount of progress the car manufacturers have made at cutting down on wind resistance and creating downforce over the years. Uh, there was Pretty another cool. uh, website that did a, they analyzed the actual steering wheel so you can find out what all the buttons on that fucking oh, thing do. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. These cars are jets. Yeah. That can't fly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, they can fly. They're designed. They, they've they, designed they, them so that they won't take off. If they didn't have all those air, <laughs> those foils to create downforce, it would just be in the, in the air. And that would be a new thing that Red Bull would sponsor. Yeah. Great, great They sports. should do that. Uh, there's also a new video from SpaceX showing a recent landing of their Falcon 9 reusable rocket from the perspective of the rocket looking down. So it's really helpful for understanding why getting a successful landing took so many tries. It's not exactly a smooth process, no. believe it or not. It's actually almost as impressive as those kids who toss water balls and get them to land standing up. Amazing. The crowd goes wild. No. Failed. Uh, in fact, Elon Musk, he should probably just recruit some of those bottle kids to SpaceX. Yeah, it's the hey, same thing. Instead of uh, now, instead of like when they would uh, send off a new ship, instead of breaking a champagne bottle on it, he should have them go down to the new factory and flip a oh! water bottle. Oh! It's open! I hate the future. And finally, speaking of ads, yeah. uh, there's a short film called Hyper Reality from filmmaker Keiichi Matsuda, which envisions the futuristic augmented reality hellscape that we'll all soon be living in when wearing stuff like the Microsoft HoloLens becomes as common as owning a mobile phone. Mm -hmm. It's easy to get excited about all the possibilities of having all kinds of useful information beamed directly onto your eyeballs. But as this video points out, that usefulness will probably also come with a hefty side portion of advertising and will probably also make concentrating on anything really, really hard. I can't wait till the DLC for the HoloLens comes out where I can make everyone wear like goofy outfits by paying for them. Like, I want everyone to be wearing Moo Moo's and then it puts Moo Moo's on everyone. Or you could just be like, I want to see everyone naked. Yeah, I was about to say. And then boom, it won't be their body, but yeah, you yeah, can connect well, the dots. I mean, it's, You'll it's, connect the dots. You remember that? Uh, <laughs> Like that early internet celebrity porn where they would just, just like shittily Photoshop. Photoshop someone's head yeah. onto a completely different person's body. People got off to that. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they could get off to And, a, and then those same people that. realized that they, uh, you know, got more sexual pleasure out of watching foxes and cows and stuff have sex. And dressing up like that. Yes. And then having sex with and each having other. Having sex with each other. Mm -hmm. That's what a good, good DLC. Make everyone a furry. It's going to be great for public speaking. Yeah. You can just just doubt. pretend everyone's no. uh, the audience is naked. It makes the room uh, empty. So that's good. I don't know. The possibilities are endless. It's good. it's just gonna end up being ads. Yeah. So. It's gonna be all ads. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> watch uh, an episode of Animated Weekly Weird over here. We also have a brand new episode of News Dump where uh, there's a bunch of studios that are all making the same movie, and oh, no good. one seems to care. Good. Uh, and uh, we also have a podcast with Rob Kaczynski who plays Orgrim Doomhammer, Orgrim Doomhammer in the Warcraft movie, of which there is only one so far. Yeah. And but hopefully there's two in the future. If you go to our Reddit, subreddit, yeah. uh, so submit some questions because we got Dylan Francis coming in. Yeah. And, and his buddy Brandon Dermer, and they're yeah. working on a new project called DJ World. You guys already know who they are. 
Yeah. Just go to the subreddit. Very funny guys. Very talented. The link's below. Bye. Check it out.